going live and we are live it's always fun when youtube is your friend some people think this youtube belark is um is a hobby <laughs> apologies guys um this is this is part of part of life on the road uh i don't actually know why i dropped i have solid 4g but anyway it did and we're here welcome back all 46 of you um 45 someone left so <laughs> it's uh it's good to have you all here um so i don't have a clue what i was saying um i think we can just jump in somewhere else and if if we want to pick up that we can what is the highlight of the trip so far and what is the low light can i start with the low light um then we can end on a positive because it's high low light um there are two uh can I say one of them? Well, Anna has had some very serious situations go on with some close friends with her, um, which have been really, really hard to hear and sit alongside and question the future of the project. Um, that has been really hard. And she's definitely sort of found her brave in carrying on um, with the project. And that that's just that's just been really tricky and i don't want to share unless she does and maybe we share that in a future abby and anna show i don't know um it's a very personal situation um that has been hard and that the the things around that so the mental health side of that but then additionally for me um one of my lowest moments uh anna could probably get straight out of the bag <laughs> so we stayed at a campsite um so basically it was it was just before crossing the border into england and we, I've, I've stayed on some really bizarre campsites before where, you know, I, I've mentioned the ones on like the South Downs where I've, I've just at 4am I've packed up and left because it's just, it's felt so unsafe. That safety radar is like, get out, get out, get out. Anyway, we pull up to the site and it's this farm right on the M6. So literally me from where I'm sat on your screen to probably where you are with your screen, if you're on a laptop, um, that's the bush, then it's the M6 and the campsite's on the other side of the bush. Um, it's loud. This is farm and we arrive and there's like there's all these caravans which have clearly been there for a long time and there's nobody there. So we pull up at one of the PowerPoints and like, OK, we'll just take this pitch. Thanks. Bye. Um, we knock on the door, you know, the farm guy at last. And she's like, cool, no problem. Um, just stay. Do what you want. That was that really. Um, all the dogs in the sheds and stuff because it's a farm. And that's sort of for a lot of people, dogs aren't pets. They're just they're, they're animals are working animals. Anyway. We'd made a cup of tea. We're sitting outside. I was reluctantly doing my rolling. I don't know if you saw Anna's story as a bracket yesterday, where she uh, she significantly contributed to um, your humour <laughs> over me um, about the rolling yesterday on Instagram. But anyway, um, and we see we spot these two little dogs just opposite and just just behind a van, and we're like, oh, dogs! So we we go and say hi. Um, and in, in getting closer to them, we realized that this was not a normal situation. So there are two dog cages next to each other with a tarpaulin over them. And the ground around the, the cages was just, you know, it was grass everywhere else. It just been worn away. You know how it gets when, when you're in an area for a long time. And basically the dogs, so there was a puppy, a Jack Russell puppy and a, a Dachshund puppy. Dachshund. How do you guys say it? Dachshund. Dachshund. Dachshund puppy. Dackle. Dackle. A wee dackle puppy. It wasn't a puppy, actually. An older dog. Uh, not that old. Normal dog. <laughs> normal age dog. And um, basically, they 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 were tied by collars and leads to the cages. And all around them, there was dog poop. It, it stank. Um, they'd clearly been there for a long time. The skin around where their collars were was, was, was raw in a few little places. The, all the fluff had gone. The Dachshund um, clearly had some kind of skin condition, which my inference would be something to do with the fact that it's living in its own waist, um, was losing all of its fur. Um, and we sort of just said hi, had a little play with the puppy. The Dachshund jumped on my lap and was adamant it was going to stay there. Um, when I went back later, it jumped on my lap and it nestled in here and it just started shaking. Like it clearly just wanted hugs and, and, and love. Um, and it was obviously animal neglect you know um and it was it was absolutely heartbreaking and it tore me apart and we <laughs> i was forced anna really into the situation she's on the page but she was like you need to you need to eat and drink and <laughs> live your life um but anyway um i couldn't just get it out of my head and heart i i have no space for neglect of any kind personal animal 
Um, it'd probably make me useless traveling in other countries, but anyway. Um, so I rang the SSPCA, the Scottish R RSPCA, um, which is an animal welfare organization here in the UK, and sort of said what the situation was. And they rang me for a checklist. And essentially, she goes, are these people doing this on purpose? I said, what do you mean? Well, they're, they're sitting right on the the perimeter of the governmental guidelines for keeping an animal, which is basically to provide food and water, which they had, um, shelter, which was the, the cages they were living in, um, and safety. And the safety was the collars around their necks, which were making them go raw. But the safety was the fact that they couldn't run away. I mean, that's very debatable, in my opinion. So for me that was really hard and we debated what to do you know there was no one around to really approach then there were some people around in the nicest possible way they're exceptionally sketchy people um that you you don't just go hello nice weather today you go oh look i dropped a coin on the other side of the pavement um you know um, we would have had a conversation but let's just put it they weren't entertaining it and we were very wary because we didn't want to unsettle anything how do you approach a conversation like this when you're also literally sleeping five meters away from them in a different vehicle so we agreed it would be best to approach the conversation in the morning if the opportunity should arise. We sort of lingered around in the morning um, to to try and have a conversation. No one woke up. And in the end, the best decision was to leave a note on the pickup truck, um, just basically saying, hey, you know, we really like your dogs. If you ever need to find another home for them, um, then please, because, you know, left a number and we never heard anything and it's, it's been on my mind every single day since like because what could i do we, we couldn't just take the dogs because then we'd be in the wrong you know that would be theft um we couldn't just let the dogs go um really considered that but that that's just not really an option either is it um and it, it's just that 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 moral debate in my head has been so hard and are these people struggling so much you know that they can't afford to care for the animals at all is what it what causes that mindset um as you can see the fact that i'm giving this time <laughs> shows that it's, it's a sad situation and um yeah I've, i found it really heartbreaking and i think you know we've come up against a lot of obstacles with this trip i've mentioned a few of them before um and i don't mind just reading some off now you know at the beginning of the project we lost 500 quid to the first person who was going to rent a van we were going to rent a van from because they basically didn't want to give it back to us um you know we we've 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 we had a sponsor who then sort of twisted things and was non-committing and like that basically we got sort of screwed over there so we sort of pulled out there for our own safeguarding essentially um and and just being like no we have to stay true to the values of the project um we I mean, yeah, to be fair, I could just go on. There have been a lot of those, <laughs> a lot of challenges, a lot of obstacles. But the fact that we're still here, we're still going is an amazing thing. Um, and this is the point in this. You know, um, we 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 want to talk about the difficult stuff. We want to talk about how COVID has left people broken and isolated in, in, in their own homes, you know, and people who are coming on this walks are being so brave and for sharing their stories. Um, and it's uh, it's just it's it's really it's so precious and 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 the fact that people people can come on these walks and spend time with us people are meeting us after walks if they're too anxious to do a walk you know it's it's just the biggest blessing um and that's why we're doing this we're trying to spark community and we're trying to look at all the suffering and pain in, in wherever we can and sprinkle a bit of lightness and offer people a hand and say, come, you know, there, there is a place where you're welcome, where you can belong, no matter what you're struggling with, we will find a way. Um, and that's what we're on a mission to do. So that's the low. As for the highs, well, I cycled at Harness to Pass. That was quite fun. <laughs> um, yeah, that was definitely a high for me. The first day was still one of my favourites, just like, whew, 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 you know, I was on a mission that day, very much paid for it the next day, but um, yeah, first day was amazing. Honest to, the Honest to Pass day was a 65 mile cycle into the Lake District and then finishing on Honest to Pass. And um, if you don't know Honest to Pass, it's one of the steeper passes in the UK, um, which goes, it's 25% gradient and then it sort of levels off, but it just keeps going up to this late mine. And um, yeah, it was a very emotional day like the ups and downs on that day were the most intense thus far um and that was really that was hard but then getting to honest uh, we had a bit of kerfuffle at the before reaching the 
just before the start and then I was like having panic attacks my stomach cranked up it was just like oh my gosh this is not ideal um but basically it ended up shifting the gears um in in the in the well-being scheme and the head scheme and it became a very very spiritual climb um it was very life affirming and I don't know if that's really going to come across fully in the film because it's it's so hard to communicate things which are beyond words but um Honest to Pass was a real high <laughs> and, uh probably the funniest moment of the trip um was was um uh, partly thanks down to my partner in crime um this one over here she had a she had a good little <laughs> uh, so we we uh, upon the point of Anna learning about what happened um with her friend the the, the the low was low you know so we said okay we're gonna take the morning and just go to the castle bamberg castle in northumberland highly recommend if you've not been there and anyway there were um there were sand dunes there's a big beach like all all around dunbar and all of this area is stunning coast and uh we went to find colin our other cameraman and um anna loves sand as you guys know i'm not the biggest fan so i was like it's sand because that's what i do apparently um <laughs> and, and i'm like oh i'll go down to the bottom of of the dune and, and film you running down because anna's like the hills are alive and then the next thing i know the hills are alive with whap <laughs> She just she's on my camera screen and then she just disappears. I'm like, huh? and then I'm like, where is she? And then oh, there she is, like in a crumpled upside down, screwed up heap, <laughs> half buried in sand, um, because she'd run, caught her foot in like a foothole, and just gone. <laughs> it was epic. And it's all on camera, so stay tuned for a YouTube channel near you. <laughs> her face. <laughs> Yeah, that for me at least was the funniest moment. Like I proper cried there. Why are you turning out my light? I'm trying to improve the situation. It was a dark and stormy night. So anyway, that was that. Um oh come on, you love it. <laughs> I don't know if that has improved the situation. It has to be completely <laughs> Looking to van life, folks. Uh, okay, so that's the highs and lows for now. Uh, many more stories that can come your way. Um, best van meal. Oh, do you know the best thing about having an Anna in your life? She can cook like nobody's business. You guys know how much I love sweet potato. She has a speciality, which is sweet potato. Can we put that on there now? Mm. Sweet potato, um, cabbage, onion, garlic, just mush. And it is... Oh, might and you know what's funny pretty much every time we're in a we're in a settlement together i'm like oh just pop into the store and see if i can find something to eat and i walk around like no 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 like food's been a bit of an issue i have to be honest but anyway what do i want i want some of anna's food <laughs> it's like you can't buy that in a supermarket um i love her she makes this really nice like bulgur wheat quinoa um veggie halloumi dish thing which has been really really good we've been having some pasta <laughs> um i haven't had much salad to be honest but that's because i'm finding that quite difficult at the moment um that's definitely a home food but yeah she um she's amazing so what can i say good appetit <laughs> have you felt safe along the journey also a good question um if you can just excuse me the rest of my digestive is staring at me so i just have to give it a moment <sighs> oh <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> nothing to see here the rest of um the what was the question have you felt safe <laughs> have i felt safe i was gonna talk about digestives <laughs> do you love a good digestive i'm not a biscuit you tough this trip i have become one it stays on this trip i'm telling myself that so generally speaking yes i'm quite environmentally sensitive in terms of or energy sensitive whatever phrase you want to use um there have been a few areas I've gone through where I've definitely like sped up because it's felt like, oh, I don't, this doesn't feel good. But generally speaking, everywhere I've gone through has been good. Um, I really find the settlement cycling through towns and stuff tricky. Um, some of the, the big roads I've ended up on, the A9 <coughs> within the early days was really tricky. Massive logging, trory, tro logging lorries, geez, that's a mouthful, um, have been really... Um, they're quite intimidating the eight and look you know the a9 constant traffic but they did give me space then there was the a1 i ended up on the dual carriageway 
coming down towards the border across to England and it was misty and that didn't feel safe either. Um, and then just the other day, the A17 um, over here in, in, in Lincoln and um, Norfolk, are they the same? Norfolk's a county, right? I'm sure it is. I'm getting. A bit, I'm very unfamiliar with this part of the, of the world. And then there's what's, what's East Anglia? That is that just the east? Hmm. Interesting. Um, so that was that was by far the most dangerous um, <coughs> because there was no hard shoulder at all, um, like literally that. So I had to be on the road, and it was just constant traffic coming towards me, and just constant lorries going. And there was this this crosswind, so a side wind, which was genuinely forcing my bike off the road then the lorries would come either way and the whoosh, of the lorries it's like i had to stop pedaling every time a lorry came past which was all the time um because my butt like i was just swerving all over the place and there was no give because this side was a massive drop and this side was a lorry so take your pick you know um so that was definitely the most dangerous but in general i felt quite safe um in that in, in uh, otherwise um i do struggle a bit with overwhelm on the big roads but uh it's it's is it getting better? I think the last couple of days I felt more confident, um, but I'd much rather poodle along on a quiet country road and look for red squirrels, you know, how it goes. So thank you for that question. Do we have any more? There are a few to me. To you? Yeah. Oh, what do you, a mozzie just came in. I've, I have all the bites. I'm not good with bites. I can't close the door. Okay. I just... Get in here. Light stick is now present. This is, this is glow stick. Oh, glow stick. <laughs> You know, there's glow sticks that are really not great for the planet, but you snap them and it's like, ooh, glowy. This is this, this human. Sorry, it is so dark. There's not a lot we can do about it I right can now. blind you. This is how bright my yellow shirt is. <laughs> Imagine this in sunlight, people. There's no, I mean, that's why I'm trying to give a little bit of additional light off, you know. What if I put it over there? I'll put it here. You answer yeah. the questions. Okay. So, um, first of all, James, uh, maybe one of the younger followers, um, wants to know what a day in my in my life looks like at the moment. And to be honest, it's get up, make sure Abby has some breakfast, um, try to stay out of her way. We're still trying to figure out whether I should be more in her way to actually get her do the things that she needs to do before she starts cycling or whether I should stay more out of the way. Depends on the day. <laughs> so it's always a gamble. And um, then I send her off and I pack up camp um there's a lot of shuffling involved fan in life in one word is, is shuffling, shuffling. For us, we've decided. um putting everything away so nothing is flying about ideally the doors are shut when i start driving with this one tends to not do what <laughs> why don't you eat your digestive <laughs> um, one occasion i accidentally half completely shut the door and there's me driving and the door just goes <laughs> you are so angry but you chose not to be angry which well because I'm the van was for. not broken so I, I, I was like okay she got away with this one <laughs> um it's just me and my biscuit here in the corner having a good time <laughs> <laughs> so and then i start driving um to wherever Abby and I meet up for her little lunch break and I try to get there in time, do a few emails on the way and then I make a quick lunch, which is normally a wrap or a sandwich of some sort and um, fill up on, on Abby's water and, you know, I might hop into a shop if we need more food or, um, you know, the other day I had to find camping gas mm -hmm. so I can keep cooking, stuff like that, you know, little organisational things that I, I do on the road. And then normally I don't really get to camp more than maybe half an hour or an hour before Abby gets there. So I try to kind of unload the van whatever gets unloaded and pop it up and make the bed um and and start cooking so that whenever abby gets gets home um Aww, <laughs> that's cute. um yeah dinner is not not far off um and then it's you know kind of abby do, does her rolling we eat and then i 
you know, sometimes I do the dishes when she is getting into bed or we just go to bed fairly early. Yeah, so that's mm-hmm. that's a rough rundown of my my days in the van. Mm, and um, my, my days coupling that are they eat, wake up, eat. <laughs> wake up, eat, make drink, myself cycle, eat, eat drink. <laughs> drink. I try and drink. I'm finding the drinking is getting quite tricky because I have to drink a lot. I have a constant headache. Very frustrating. Um, so I do stretching stuff in the morning, stretching and rolling. Then I get out. Which is usually a bit of a come on now. <laughs> um, then cycle, eat, drink, <laughs> cycle, <laughs> um, take some video, um, and then get in is straight away get stuff on charge. So the Garmin, my headphones, they're aftershock headphones. I know if you, a lot of you guys have lo- asked about that, they're really good. Um, I can chat more about them in another video. I want to do a kit video. Any videos you have around this that you want to see ask us okay I, it's on my radar to do some filming for this project just a separate video it's the last of digestive gone gone just because somebody wanted to know that those were just regular digestives yeah no i can't do chocolate unfortunately folks mm. um yep yeah, then usually have a cup of tea with the cookies <laughs> uh whilst stretching because you know priorities um then i have a shower and then basically it is eat i might do some diary writing i might have done that in the morning and then sleep like and that is not what we expected it to be is it we thought we'd have much more give time we don't but it's it's all right yeah <coughs> sorry to steal your clothes. no no not at all and Tejo, that's a very good question does uh do we have medical or massage support um that's down to me or <laughs> is it um we, she booked me an osteo which was amazing yeah, yeah. yeah. um we had one yeah, in we'd... in dent a good guy no otherwise we have the rollers and we try to be as kind to each other as we can at the end of a long day um the odd little foot rub here and there you know? yeah you know i try i try to give your legs a bit of a rub when they are sore but it's just all the time now yeah and i've and, noticed and, and, and that like you're... backing off because it's just like <laughs> oh she hurts I, I touched it and it's like <laughs> there are particular spots that that hurt yeah, but in general, um, they were right. Somebody in the first uh, live session just now asked um, how I'm holding up with the Scottish accent, wanting to know uh, the opinion of a Bavarian. I can only say there's nothing better the world has br- brought to life than the Scottish accent. Can I be a wee Scottish lass? Yes, that right. would make you even better. Even better. It's the one thing. I love the Scottish accent. I think it's just insanely beautiful. I love listening to it. Um, I yeah, I, I there are no words. Don't don't let it go any further because I no answer. exactly. Um, it wouldn't be wouldn't be good for you. Would it? <laughs> You're like evil laugh in the background. <laughs> like oh great, guys, I might need a new van driver. <laughs> well, because you've gone off with some. No, it's I'm not. Kilted human. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I brought a kilt. It would have sold everything. Um, and I think it was Karen who asked um, how I find it driving on the wrong side of the road. Karen, thank you very much. Karen, you're fired. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's only one right side of the road. I will say it over and over again to everybody I meet in my life, just to wind them up. And because I love the English language to be doing me this favor um she just likes to be right yeah i do <laughs> it's just... do um, you know what i'm humble enough to accept this wrongness of yours <laughs> wow. um, left is right left is right <laughs> left is right right is right there's only one right um look over there <laughs> <laughs> I um, really don't mind it anymore when I first came to the UK and was thrown into you're driving to London uh, to the airport uh, in a hire car I thought I was gonna die um, that yeah that is long gone and I don't mind anymore whether it's a right car on the left side or a left car on the right side or vice versa Give me something with wheels and I drive it wherever you want. 
I'm I'm very I can testify to that. She's she quite likes the hedges. <laughs> wow. Good gotcha. job. Maybe you should look for a new van driver. Oh, but I like gotcha. this one. <laughs> See how she does this? She's a pro at just <laughs> crushing my thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. no, it's all can, can I just can you imagine can I just say like I'm just looking at this cycle can you imagine if this was like pop out and you had to ride that <laughs> just this little bus. I've got a good image going ding, 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 ding. <laughs> is this tea <laughs> I don't know what I've cooked up but I don't think you should be continuing to drink this it's all right. oh wonderful uh, what's your favourite ice cream that you've ever had? Carl uh, wanted to know. I had a fantastic one today. Uh, was it called Mr. Whippy? Why is it Mr. Whippy? That's bias. Well, actually, Nick, our ranger on the North Broads, on the Broads, told us that the the concept of the Whippy was created by Margaret Thatcher, which was a very interesting fact, which I had no idea. Anyway, um, completely independent of your opinion of Margaret Thatcher. So... Favorite ice cream um is hazelnut. I have to be honest. I love hazelnut. Hazelnut ice cream is so hard to find. There's what is it called? Baboo. Bamboo. Yeah, baboo. If anybody mm-hmm. has uh some some spare just time and fancy sending us a frozen packet somehow of um hazelnut ice cream, I would genuinely <laughs> take you up on that because I don't know how to find. I've not had enough of it recently. Uh, otherwise, pistachio. What about you? About me, don't my it, for me, it's it's very hard to say because it just overall. Don't ask me what's my favorite. Mm-hmm. I have a few flavors that I wouldn't pick, and otherwise, give me the ice cream. Yeah, pretty much. I had uh, the task in Keswick though, didn't I? She's like, "Go buy me an ice cream." So I just went and. But there's a story behind that. It's not just go buy me. An ice cream. <laughs> you put um, it in there like that. It empowers me. I'm just so, this uh, grumpy kid in the corner. Mommy, <laughs> go and buy me an ice cream now. So anyway, this this is this is an ice cream connoisseur. So I'm like, oh geez, this is this is this is quite a responsibility. So I walk into this ice cream shop like, hello, I'm here to buy an ice cream for Miss Alf and my partner. And um, he's he's really grumpy. Even though he works in a sweet shop, you'd think he'd be quite high. Um, anyway, so, so I, I'm looking at it all like, oh, this is, don't mess this up. This could be the end of our relationship if I get this ice cream <laughs> choice wrong. <laughs> so anyway, I, uh, I find, I, I chose all right, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. And I chose thing. for myself really poorly. It was disgusting. <laughs> it was the worst ice cream I've ever had. Peach, whatever it was. Peach Melba. What it even was, is that? Yeah, it was it's, very it's, artificial. He just wanted to put it on me because he hadn't sold enough of it. Probably. That's my belief. Yeah. It's, we, we and the peach is not so lucky this I'm time. I'm too naive in this ice cream bizarreness. Um, I feel we have to shut the doors because the, the bugs are coming in. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's out to go <laughs> um, I would like to know two answers for violence two, um, two answers to the questions for you what is your favourite biscuit and what is your favourite ice cream flavour that's that's the question um, okay where are we up to on the questions um, we're also not anywhere right now we, we have a campsite to find at some point no we have oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I had something else written down. If there's any questions, guys, you you want to shout at us? Because it does seem like you're shouting Women's Capitals, just saying. But <laughs> how far away at any one time is Anna with the van? Um, It varies a lot. Yeah. Never can... more than like an hour. Yeah, I would say an hour is approximately. Mm. All right. Especially because we've been going to keep going. Very blessed with the weather. So Abby is actually going or has to go through quite a lot of water. Um and a bottle an hour, folks. That's the rule. Minimum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um I'm not actually achieving that. No, you did. Some days. Yesterday you did. Yesterday you drank more than that. You drank two bottles an hour. Really? Mm-hmm. That's why I was so desperate for the toilet all the time. <laughs> um yeah, because it 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 kind of works out like that. Anyway, this next question is legendary. Yeah, are you managing to get enough popcorn? Hold that thought, my friend, because we have not one, not two, but 
about three bags of popcorn. Da, da, da. <laughs> uh, to be fair, that's the most popcorn we've had on the trip. And yeah. it's been sat there for quite a while. Yeah. We're not consuming it in our usual range. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, because I, I'm every night, I'm like, tonight is going to be a popcorn night. I don't need tonight. it, but I want it. <laughs> it is a popcorn night tonight. <laughs> and then me. Abby just comes in, she eats her dinner, and then she's like... <laughs> I fell asleep on the On the roll. On the roll. <laughs> I was just like... Just dribble, like, <laughs> and I came out. I'm like, dinner is ready. I wasn't asleep now. <laughs> I do not look like that. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, what do you think of the camper van? Camping life. Um, Toby is great. We named it Toby. Mm. Yes. Um, I want to get. <laughs> we did. Um, so we uh we I was very intrigued. Anna's done a bit of van lifing before, um, in a car- big caravan thing, am I right? Big mm. one, yeah. This is the first time I've certainly been in a van as such. Um and I was very curious because I feel like um the van life thing has become a trend, you know, as in everybody's doing it, it's Instagramified, it's all beautiful and light, people are moving into their vans for you know, whatever. And um, we can see the logic of why a lot of people, particularly younger people, excuse me, are moving into their vans because it's freaking impossible to get on the property ladder because it's so expensive. Um, It's just I feel very deprived of that opportunity. Um, But then, you know, also, I think just a lot of people have just got caught up in it. And in in one way, it's become a bit materialistic, even though it's not materialistic, because you might not be looking after things. You're looking after that, that the way of portraying yourself so it's been very interesting um and i can say i mean i can just speak for myself that's okay like i've really enjoyed it i think we've really enjoyed it but i've really enjoyed it it has definitely been a shuffling act i have not spent anywhere near as much time in the van as anna has um for me it's a beginning and end middle of the day sort of thing in order just oh this is my life now um and uh you know i think there are a few things we'd change about the van but for this project, it has been fantastic. I, like, I wouldn't want to be doing this in a tent. Um, it'd be a completely different trip if we were doing this, um, you know, bike packing as such. Like, yeah. this would be the year, um, probably, <laughs> the, the summer at least. So it's 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 really, it's opened up a lot of possibilities and doors mm. for us. We've got all of our kit. We come back and can get good sleep and good food and a cup of tea. Um you wouldn't be able to do anything close to the mileage if we no needed way. to be on bikes. It would be just, it wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have been able to do this project in this way mm. and in, in the time frame that we had available mm. if it wasn't with a van yeah. as such. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you just have to think about it. What do you need to actually climb up a mountain? You need proper boots. Mm. Um, That's not going to eat you tonight. Um, you need a backpack and everything. Doing all of that in a bike pack is it's actually quite impossible. It's v- yeah, fairly impossible. I mean, I could have a little, you know, trailer. Yeah, we could do it with a trailer. <laughs> but then also, it's like you know, I have ended up some of the lows for me as well. Actually, to be honest, fair is me. So I have the Garmin and I have Blue. Blue is my bike, and I love Blue. But I've decided officially, Blue and Garmin and I, we're all colleagues. We're acquaintances. We're not friends. Um, we function together because we have to because we're on this project but blue has a habit of constantly destroying my shins um through either the the handlebars just going and like whacking me or the pedals going and whacking me and i am um, i mean um, i have changed skin colors over the last few days because i have fairly bruised like this blue like it's been and quite painful and i'm foam rolling like this hurts and she's like you have bruises oh yeah that's what it hurts <laughs> it's not my muscles <laughs> um so the the where was i going with that i was going somewhere with that i really i wanted to go there with that oh so some of the lows of it um the garmin has taken me down routes you probably saw some of the stories that have been like off-road routes like this national cycle network number one up in northumberland and i actually had to come and rescue me um because there was no way i could do that and like big signs and google maps is not right yeah. they are lying to you it's do not end. pass and yeah and and basically like i met some other cyclists they did four punctures in an hour because of the quality of the gravel underfoot and like so anyway whatever it's it's been it's been good so coming to the van at the end of the day has been good and bike maintenance we haven't really had to do a lot i do feel like my gears are they're getting they they feel 
like they have more resistance at the moment when I'm pedaling. So I don't know enough about bikes about that. So we need to find someone to help us. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's the bike maintenance. We have someone who might help us in mm. Manchester, I think, if we go near there. Do we get to keep the camper van? <laughs> oh, please. Letting go of the camper van is I am going to sob. It's It's become hours <laughs> it's gonna be really sad to get rid of the camper van i i i'm really thinking a lot about this van thing whether we should get a van at some point and i mean the trouble is that there's so much money right now but if you guys think we should have a van thumbs up that would be quite cool let's just get the general consensus um, <laughs> yeah that would be grand but otherwise i think that's a wrap right Mm. so we are we have a whole bunch of stuff to give away that we haven't had a chance to do yet um we have got um we've got the cicerone books right limited edition cicerone books they printed for their 50th anniversary mm -hmm. um these incredible books uh which are really visual telling the stories of the authors the history of the company cicerone is an amazing organization most of you guys who've hiked in the uk would have used a cicerone guidebook um they're they're really trying to get on board with the environmental stuff as well they've done away with their plastic sleeves um they have a recycle scheme so you can send books back and they will recycle it all sorts of things so cicerone is awesome um <clears throat> amazing guy um russell hepton he's the trail hunter if you guys have probably seen some of his videos he was the founder of through notes which he created during lockdown in march last year through notes are basically these little um, pocket notebooks which are waterproof tearproof scruffle proof um and you can write on them draw in them and we've got a whole bunch of those to give away that's a lot of thumbs up FYI. um <clears throat> uh we've got a whole bunch of those to give away we really want to support him on his mission they are again made out of recycled materials they're they're really quite cool actually aren't they mm. little fruit notes um we have got we've got another dji <laughs> potentially yeah, okay fine. oh i didn't we didn't bring that we have but it's at home <laughs> sorry um we've got a few other things to 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 give away um and so we're going to be doing that in our next and next knives session i would like to say that we're doing it this time next friday but we have struggled we wanted to do live sessions every single week um and we have there's not been signal there's not been time there's not been power it has been that has just been too much um so we've waited for the, the the best opportunity and right now we're just in the car park on the norfolk broads um <clears throat> next friday we'll see us um doing the snowden sunrise walk so we will be uh beginning our hike up snowden at 2 30 in the morning um so what i would say is pencil in your diary next friday 6 30 p.m that we'll be doing a live session and obviously follow along on social media and we'll be bringing you up to speed with that. Now, what I want to say is with the giveaways, we're just doing these giveaways, first of all, to support these amazing organizations and hopefully encourage you guys to get stuck in just a tiny bit more financially in terms of supporting us. So everybody who has been on a walk and everybody who has donated towards our project, um, £15 or more is straight away entered into the draw. If you've come on a walk and you've donated, you get entered twice. If you donated twice, you get entered twice, whatever. Um, so it's £15 or more and you are entered into this draw and it all goes towards supporting the project. So there's two ways to donate. You can donate through GoFundMe. Ta-da! Or you can donate through PayPal. We have a, um, just trying to get out whilst I'm talking, a um a paypal me so basically with the link i'm about to share it just is completely connected to our abby bikes britain account and it just pop straight back in there so everything anything you can offer is so greatly appreciated but to be completely honest with you just having you guys here hanging out with us today means a lot this interaction on the side just makes us feel like yep we've got a community you know mm. because we're doing everything we can to show up for for you guys, for wider community as a whole, to be on the front line with these difficult conversations. But, you know, as we've said to so many of you guys who have come on the walks, you showing up for us is pretty game changing. It it's, it's, means a lot. It's really, really nice to meet you guys on the walks and have those have those conversations face to face and, yeah. and kind of feel the, the something coming back you know in 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 that mm -hmm. um because it's it's just a different dimension in the online community and yeah. and um <clears throat> we've we've been in the same last two years that everybody else has been really and and it's just yeah it's super super awesome to to see all of this um to feel all of that that's yeah. just my little absolutely there from the side thank you <laughs> 
So, guys, you can join us on a walk. We've got a whole bunch of national parks to go all on the side. Please, please, please book on. If you're unsure, any questions, drop us an email. It's info at spendmoretimeinthewild.co.uk. I'd like to say we will answer that, but this one will probably answer that. Um, we'll get back to you. We'll do everything we can to help you. Um, we'd love to see you. Please come along. Um, and that's a wrap, right? That is a wrap. Wonderful. We are going to go get some food. Oh, look, popcorn. Sorted. <laughs> <laughs> Nutrition is key, folks. Eat your greens. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out today. Sorry about the randomness. I'm actually just buzzing to, to be back on live. It's been a long time, actually. Mm. Um, so I love seeing the interaction. It's so it's, nice. Yeah. Um, I'm always... I've I've said to Anna, because we did a few on the Sundays, and I found them quite... They were quite, quite quiet. They were quieter. And we've learned what days are sort of that little bit better. So, um, and thank you. Thank you to all of you guys who have just donated on this live stream and the last one as well. Um, it means a lot. So that's us over and out. Thank you for watching, guys. Enjoy your adventures. And until next time, stay, stay wild. wild. Stay wild. Stay wild. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're special. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>